Now that the showcase season is over, we can get back to experimenting on meta-breaking decks. I think it's time for an advent of Spear Shops as a way to combat the Luris Saga metagame. I have pretty high hopes for this deck. See you in round one. Welcome back, Vintage Gamers. It is the end of showcase season um, until next year, until 2025. Unfortunately, the Mox format is not changing in a way that would produce more vintage seasons. So we're only going to get one uh, quarter a year or one third of a year. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there will not be content. We're going to make the same VODs or same you know events that we did before. This is going to be a challenge, and it's time to start exploring some archetypes that uh, I haven't been playing with recently because I was too focused on trying to win. Focusing on trying to win has not been very good for me, so maybe uh, this will be more fruitful. Um, this is a deck that is not really a style that I typically enjoy or even think is necessarily like abstractly strong. Uh, but I think it lines up pretty well into the current metagame, and I have been watching the recent success of the... This deck has some core pilots, like Loriwa, uh, who is actually back, and they have been doing very well. Um, and so I'm going to run my version through a challenge today and see how it goes. I think the idea of playing four Null Rod, four Crucible, with tons of Wastelands and Ghost Borders and Strip Mines is really, really strong into the current metagame, uh, uh, Luris, Luris wise I think Luris is the, is the big deck that this, this kind of strategy should prey on. Um, I don't know, I'm a little worried about, um, Doomsday, but maybe if you just play Patchworks and Nidalsis and you have, like, relevant clocks, then Doomsday is actually okay. Because Agro Shops has historically always been pretty good against Doomsday, but Prison Shops hasn't. Now that they're all lumped together in one kind of, we're calling it, we're calling it Sphere Shops, um, it's a little hazier. But we have, like, the strongest elements of Aggro Shops in Patrick Automaton and Nettlesis, and the strongest elements of Prison Shops in um, Crucible and Golos. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I have, some, I, have some, I have some hope for this deck, actually. I think this deck is pretty uniquely set up to beat the current metagame. Um, should be pretty good into Dredge. Uh, four Null Rod should make it at least reasonable into Jewel. Uh, I, guess, I guess you can say we have five Null Rods, because we have Karn and Null Rod. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think like, this deck is actually just uniquely set up to be very good right now. And, uh, although I don't typically consider this deck to be a abstractly powerful deck, I think, uh, it could do with some work. So, see you in round one of this Vintage Challenge. Have you ever wanted to win your own real Black Lotus? The legendary NYSE Vintage Tournament returns this June 22nd on Long Island in New York. 15 proxy high stakes paper vintage action with eight whole pieces of unlimited power as prizes. You are not going to want to miss it. Check out more information in the description below. I hope to see you there. Let's battle. All right, round one of the vintage challenge. We're up against Goaded Gamer Discover and Doomsday Master. Uh, Doomsday is obviously the biggest winner of the four ponder unrestriction and has been really showing it. Doomsday was already a viable and good deck before Ponder was unrestricted, putting up very good numbers in the showcases. Um, but with the Ponder unrestriction, the numbers have gone up a couple percent. Not a huge amount, but a, a, enough to be noticeable. To, uh, and the deck is just doing a lot of winning. Um, Eric uh, Kiaku has just recently won Emperor of uh, a, a Vintage over in Osaka. And I don't know. I think Doomsday is really the only deck that like super benefited from a ponder unrestriction. There are some like fringe four ponder decks, but the only deck that was able to really just absorb it immediately, cut bad cards for good cards, was definitely Doomsday. So, um, oof. tough round one pairing and tough matchup and tough deck. So we'll see what we can do. We did talk about a little bit in the intro how I think that it's possible that Doomsday could have could be really good against us but we also have some good um some good cards against doomsday as well no rod is not the most strong not the strongest but um wasteland is typically quite good and we have some traps so we'll see what we can do also i'm on the draw because i'm always on the draw 
All right, here we go. What do we got? We've got Sphere into Wasteland. I feel like that's about as much as we can do here. If they lead on a, on an island, we have Ghost Quarter as well. So, Blooded Strand. Oh, and Sapphire. Very nice. Oh, yeah. This is a, a very prime example of how to win with Doomsday. Simply draw three, two of your three fast mana. I assume we're going to die on turn one then. Yep. Turn one, Doomsday, and we're dead. I think this deck, very fair. Doomsday players will always tell you this is uh this this doesn't happen, but this happens quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot. Yep, turn one lethal. Seems pretty good. All right, well, I will concede to your Gitaxian probe because I am deterministically dead. Uh, all right, so I'm going to bring in three Mind Break Traps, and I'm going to take out... Um, like, Caracas. I guess I could, like, double for a Shieldred, maybe. I don't think Discover ends on Shieldred. Oh, man, Doomsday is so strong. Now there's a Merc type. Yeah, so I'm going to take out Caracas, and I'm going to take out, like, two of the Null Rods. And just keep the rest. Yeah. Null Rod's not bad, but it's definitely worse than a Mind Break Trap. Yep, it's all fine. Well, the good news is if we die on turn one again, I can play some TFT. <laughs> Which is all I really want to do anyways, so. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we got? Man, this hand is... I think this hand is not it. This hand is just not it. I would keep this hand against uh, Luris and be pretty happy. Um, but against Doomsday, I'm really looking for... Like, if this... If any of these were a Sphere, or a Null Rod, or a Wasteland, then we could definitely play this hand, but... I'm gonna Mulligan. Alright, this hand has a Mind Break Trap. This is, like, basically exactly what I was saying, so... This hand has a Mind Break Trap, and it has, um, threats, so... There will be a nice little question here of, are we leading on... What are we leading on? I'm pretty sure we're putting away one of the Wastelands. Oh, my opponent kept seven cards again. Hmm. I just don't know if I want to... I think I'm just going to lead on Patchwork. I think that's the best way to go about this. And then next turn we can go Emerald Nettle Assist, Attack for 3, Wasteland. And hope that's good enough. Kind of F6 until my opponent plays a second spell, and then I'll F3. Probably fetches a basic now, though. Yeah. Unlucky. Bottom, bottom. Pass. Ghost quarter. Crucible. All right. I guess we can play around days now, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I'm definitely interested in deploying Nettlesis first. I just need to clock my opponent as fast as possible. Uh, obviously, the Nettlesis is a stronger card than Crucible. If we were playing a super long game, I'd want to like bait with Crucible, but typically you just don't have the time to like make that kind of value grindy play. You just need to force the clocks through and hope it's good enough. We built our own little hollow one here, so that's kind of nice. Opponent is debating whether countering this to reduce the clock is worth not being able to counter a future sphere or something like that. <sighs> uh... 
I would say we're probably not very favored to win this game. Our hand wasn't bad, but it wasn't, you know, Black Lotus, Mox, Sapphire, turn one, Doomsday kill you, you know? Well, so far, not the good stuff, but I did think it was uniquely set up for this weekend, so. All right, we have resolved both of our attackers. That's nice. All right, fetch land. Dark Ritual Doomsday, Force Backup, Kill Me. Oh, oh, Time Walk. Okay. I should have done this on their turn. And now they can gush. I was just F6'd. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's fine. If they want to gush, it's okay. I should have, obviously, I should have done it on the last turn. Um, I just was F6 through it because I was trying to beat. Act like I don't have Mind Break Trap. Jeez. Well, I got punished for that pretty badly. Demonic Tutor entered the revealed card zone. It's quite the interesting one. I guess I'm like kind of happier they're going for Demonic Tutor instead of just like going for Ancestral, right? Does this mean they're going to go Black Lotus uh, Doomsday? Saga Gaming. I'd much rather just make them counter this. If they don't counter this, then we get a Wasteland, obviously. I, I assume they had a Negation. Uh, play the Saga out because it pumps the Nettle Cyst. All right, well, they need to win on this next turn here. I, it, it kind of feels like they're playing around Mind Break Trap, so it might be quite, not, quite hard to win, but. I mean, I made a misplay in this game, so kind of on me too. Blue, blue, or oh yeah, Oracle Consult, sicko. That's why they went DT. Just plays around trap, kills me. Huh. I mean. It's possible we would have won this game if I had uh, wastelanded them on the other turn, but obviously just a little F6 issue. I mean, it's also possible we would have lost the game anyways. Like, I think that's definitely possible, too. It's kind of bold of them, but like if we have another wasteland, it's pretty bad for them to make this line, but yeah. Where's their ancestral? Oh, here it is. Yeah, so I assume they mysticaled for demonic and demonic for oracle and set up an oracle kill because the oracle kill played around mind break trap. So I, I do think it's probably likely that I lost because I I was F6 through the Wasteland. I just wasn't ready for Time Walk. If they had gotten Wastelanded, they might have just gone Mystical Ancestral or Mystical for like the, uh, Dark Ritual or something. And then maybe they just like don't have enough action to get through. Hard to say. <sighs> yeah. Here we go, round two, hopefully. Uh, that's Luris opponent, so that's good. Lost the die roll, but Luris should be a matchup that I'm excited to play against. I've got a lot of mana this turn, so... <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. I, I think Luris was a matchup I'm not excited to play against. Um, basically unwinnable. <laughs> Why, man? Can't I, can't I just play against normal draws? 
Can we just play some vintage together for fun? <laughs> uh, I feel like I need to keep this wasteland for... Somehow this mana is like not actually good, right? Three... Three, four, five, six, and that actually just doesn't cast anything. What if I just play a uh, land Golos? Like, like Wasteland Golos. Nope, Force. It's not like I can bait the force out because they have a soul ring. They can just let it resolve. They're like super far ahead on mana. I, I'm, I think I'm just dead because my opponent had Sapphire Ancestral, right? I, I've been uh, extremely vintage so far today. It's okay. It's okay. Game, game two will go better, I'm sure. Does Byleris Wasteland me or... Oh, spreading seas my wasteland. Very cool. Saga by Luris. I guess that's the downside to <laughs> to playing wasteland out. I <laughs> come on, like I was like, oh, maybe I yeah, I need to hold this wasteland for a saga. No. No, you, yeah, my wasteland is now spreading seized. And I can't actually kill the saga and I'm gonna lose. <laughs> I was like, I didn't want to get like my Talarian or my Saga wastelanded, so I played my wasteland and then it was bad for me. And I'm dead. Uh, wonderful. Uh, I just had no chance to ever play the game. Yeah, but I needed my wasteland to kill the stupid land. <laughs> now this gets negated. <laughs> All right. It was a close game. Both teams fought hard. We'll go to game two and we'll just be on the play. It'll be great. Yep. Uh-huh. No problem. Very nice. It's just like, and they have the Sapphire, so they can actually cast blue spells, even though they've, they've literally played no lands that produce blue mana. But they have the Sapphire, so no problem. Ay, ay, ay. Um, I'm not actually sure you want anything from here, right? I think we're just like completely pre boarded. Like, we don't really ever want to needle one of their things. Like, because Saga and Wastelands and stuff are all cards that are better in our deck, anyways. And then we could have Dismember, but I don't really feel like Dismember is necessary. I mean, I feel like we're just pre-boarded. I don't think I'd change anything here. Like, on the draw, i probably take out Chalice and play, like, a Cage or some kind of more reactive card, but... This is great. I can go O2, O2, drop, play League, or play Twist of, uh, or play Team Fight Tactics all day. <laughs> like, I definitely made the one mistake in round one, but. Two of our four games have been just getting completely vintaged on the draw.
Yeah, I, I don't like I don't think that's bad, but like in this deck, should we really ever need, need be needling Saga? I, I feel like that we shouldn't. I <laughs> well, it's not like it's not just I lost the dice roll, not me. It's I lost the dice roll and my opponent had literally top 99% draw. Like or top 1% draw, I guess I should say. Like these are these are the best possible draws. <laughs> like a Sapphire Ancestral Soul Ring Wasteland Saga is like very close to the best from Luris and then like obviously Mox Lotus Doomsday Turn One Kill You. Like <laughs> This is a nice hand though. I got a patchwork automaton off of a workshop, pump it twice and play a, a, a thorn. And then I have Wasteland Crucible Saga. Like, this is a good hand. Yeah, but recently it feels like it's been more than some time. <laughs> I, I, I'm aware. I, I deal with, I think I deal with getting vintage pretty well at this point, considering how long we've played the game. Nice, this is a Wastelandable land. They needed to play it out to play out their box in. Um, do I want to give them the information of Crucible before or after? I don't think there's any way a Saga deck would ever play days. I don't want to search images with Google. I just want you to go open this in Google. Uh, two spreading seas, no Ds, obviously. So, I mean, I get, get forced, but that's okay. I'm just going to play a Crucible and see what happens. All right, cool. I mean, I feel like this game is very, very much won, right? I have a Crucible Wasteland lock. I have a Thorn in play. They have an off-color Moxin, and we have a... Patchwork. They got Basic Island, though, off Lorien. It's pretty good here. Basic Island doesn't cast anything that kills this, though. Soul Ring again. All right, well, I guess they're not going to be tight on mana, so... Black Lotus. All right, well... I actually have, like, a little bit of a hard time making constructs here, but... I mean, this hand is really good on my side, so we'll just have to see what they end up with. Did I did I say I have a Hercules or no? They do have one Hercules recall on their deck, so that's their best card here. Delta. I know, isn't it baloney? People playing the good cards. I mean, they could also just have, like, Bowmasters and Chump for a little while, right? But they don't have any more basics, so we should be able to Wasteland them off of, like, multiple black mana. I guess, theoretically here, if they have another black source, they can buy and play Allurus. Not that I think that's very good. Oh, they have Fatal Push plus Pay. Makes sense. Still not the end of the world, really. I have a Saga and a Wasteland. I have a Wasteland for my Saga... I think here I'm supposed to bring back Wasteland first. Null Rod. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's totally fine. Like, I have Saga and Wasteland, right? So... They have an island, and they're underneath a thorn. My saga doesn't do anything, but, like, I can play it, and, like, if I have another... If I hit any other land that makes mana, then I can make constructs, right? So I think it's fine. It's like, I'm always hitting my land drops, right? And they can't have 
lands. I always have a wasteland. Pretty sure it's good there. All right, I mean, that's basically... Okay, it's really good, though, because at least there's something in this video that's of value. That was basically a perfect example of why I think this deck is good against Lurus Saga. Like, you just, it just did all of the things. It, it put a, presented a hard threat to deal with. It locked out their mana. It was basically perfect. But what are we going to do now? This hand is uh, not ideal, but probably still a keep. Ancestral on my upkeep. Oh, no Ancestral. That means they have a spell pierce, it looks like. So we just play Automaton. They don't play Lavinia, right? No, just Bowmaster. Nope, oh, they're just forcing it. Sick. Okay. Uh, I am not going to play out a Jack. Like, it just gives them something that they can spell pierce. Oh, I guess they could just have Lowering Reveal. Yeah, that makes sense, too. Uh, I also like holding it. Like, if they're not going to play Lavinia, then there's no reason not to just conceal the fact that I have extra mana like that. They drew Sapphire off the top. And then they turned my Ancient Tomb into an island. Cool. Let's see... How much mana do I have? Four mana? Uh, no, I have five mana. So I'm definitely going to play a uh, Golos. Spreading Seas is a lot better than Blood Moon because it dies when you kill a Saga and then you can replay it with Luris and it draws a card and it pitches the Force. All right, well, I got a Golos and a Saga going, so I'm pretty sure we're winning this by a lot. My opponent also Spreading Seas my Ancient Tomb instead of my Saga, so... I think this matchup is really good for me, which is why I'm playing the deck today. Um, but it is still shops, so there's, like, a lot of problems inherent in just playing workshops in general, so. Like, I've lost two die rolls, and it's been very problematic for my chances of winning. <laughs> Man, they actually had Hercules and Negation as their last cards there. Damn. So they have Luris and one unknown. I think that's still fine. Like, I think we're winning by a lot. My deck just is, like, really powerful and just throws a bunch of Haymakers at them. So... Like, Wasteland is broken. Wasteland is just completely and utterly broken in half. I th I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, the entire format just revolves around Wasteland right now. And it's crazy. Like, yeah, Wasteland kills Saga, but, like, Wasteland also just destroyed their entire mana base and they can't play the game. <laughs> All right, no more tomb activations. Force? Sure. I mean, they're just dead. I think this deck is really good against Lurus Saga, especially blue black. And I'm not even playing worm coils in my board. You can play worm coils in your board and it gets even better. Like I, I just chose like to say that the matchup is already so good I don't need to play more cards, but you can do more you can do even more things. Bug is definitely simmered down a little bit because it, it just like it came to knock out Dredge and then Dredge got knocked out and then that's like kind of the only reason Bug exists. So, all right, we got to win.
Yay! That's my is that like my first on stream win in like forever? Oh, I guess we had the chest dono that went pretty okay. So, all right, round three. I oh, I'm gonna keep. It's not that good, but I'll keep. Opponent was not on Luris. I have lost all three die rolls. Confirmed. Bad shops player. Absolutely confirmed a bad shops player. Get good. Yeah, I wish I could get good. That would help. <laughs> so depending on what deck my opponent plays will determine if we are going to go Ancient Tomb Patchwork or Ancient Tomb Null Rod. Most instances will probably be Null Rod. We'll have to see. They did mulligan, but unfortunately they mulliganed six minutes ago when we <laughs> when they entered the game and we were playing GeoGuessr, so... They're probably taking a snack break because we made them wait. So I don't really like this hand very much, but it is what it is. No disruption. We could theoretically go like Ancient Tomb Null Rod, Ancient Tomb Automaton, Polarian Null Rod or something. I guess that's only if nothing gets countered. I don't know. This hand's like not very good, but I don't really feel like it's a mulligan. Drawing a Moxin... Doesn't really change too much. Drawing a Mana Crypt does, obviously. What about a Workshop? A workshop doesn't change much either. I wonder if there is a world where this is a mulligan. Feels kind of hard to send it back, though. All right. I'm going to see. All right. Our opponent has returned with a Chancellor of the Annex, which is uh, notably bad for us. Notably quite bad for us. Oh, Cavern Go. Not a great six. No Moxen, huh? Oh, we drew a Moxen. Okay. So I can go Ancient Tomb, pay for my Moxen, and play it a two-drop. Seems good. Gotta be one of the best draws. Don't want to tax my mana. Want to get a threat on board. Definitely playing a patchwork here. My opponent's hand does not look very good. Oh, mana crypt. What the? F they top deck a mana crypt or they were holding the mana crypt? Human? Oh, that's fine. I wonder if they'll target the patchwork automaton. Nope. Mox down. Well, oh, and a Wasteland? Uh, well, now we're going to die. Can I draw a Workshop so I can play a Null Rod, please? Man, this game stinks. <laughs> that was like the worst possible way that could have happened. Should I have just jammed Null Rod? I mean, that would have still ended up in me being getting Wastelanded and not have any mana, right? Another Wasteland. I love when my four Crucible deck gets Wasteland locked out of the game. Wasteland's a very cool card. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I draw a Workshop? I think I'm winning this game with a Workshop, for what it's worth. Ghost Quarter. Notably not a Workshop. Does this mean they have a freaking Seasoned Dungeoneer as their last card? All off of one Cavern of Souls? Yup. Oh, it's an Archon. Shit. An Archon is really bad for me. Alright, now I have to trade this away. Okay, well, hopefully they miss here. We can deploy a Null Rod, which will make it so they can't play any more spells. But it might be too late. 
Caracas. That's kind of annoying, I guess. Land. I'm going to draw another Null Rod. I need to draw a land that turn. If I had drawn a Workshop that turn, I think we're actually okay. But my opponent has also won almost all of their flips. Not ideal. Taking three and going to nine. I can't ever block a flyer, right? So it's kind of a problem. Actually, I just have nothing that blocks a flyer, right? Because I don't have a work. Uh, Yeah, I just die to that. <laughs> I simply just die to it. Oh, they drew another one? And they also drew the mana to cast it? Oh, no, they drew a through ball. Okay. Uh, So I get three attacks before I die. It's not it. They lost some flips. They're at eight. Technically, if they lose every flip, uh, it won't be enough. It's not ideal. <laughs> Though, if I draw a Saga and play a Null Rod, that makes this a 4-4 that they have to block. Wait a second. Is it winning? Uh... If they don't block, then they have to... We can win this game. This game is winnable. What is this? They're gonna... Oh, they're gonna blow their own mana crypt up. Ah, it's not winnable. Nice play. Nice play. Nice play. Uh oh 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 and they drew a season dungeon here <laughs> sure all right we almost won this game if we simply just drew our cards in a different order we would win this game unlucky really If we drew one land before one of the other spells, it was a one game. Also, if I had just played Null Rod on turn one, we would have won, probably. I guess it's my own fault, right? Should I have just jammed Null Rod? Dude, did we think that they were holding back a Mana Crypt, or do we think that they just, like, top-decked a Mana Crypt? Like... Like, I, I could have played Null Rod on turn one, but they played no Moxin out. So did I get next leveled, or did I, like... But, like, also, like, playing a Patchwork on turn one makes a lot of sense, right? It's not like it's a bad play or anything. On the play, we do want Null Rods. Uh, I kind of want, like... I guess maybe we don't want Trinisphere. I mean, Trinisphere's still... Eh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a, cut a Trinisphere and cut a... Uh... I don't know, a thorn on the play here. Uh, yeah, this hand's fine. Yeah, I don't know. But like, does that mean I was supposed to play a null rod? Like, it could have just been a bad mulligan, right? Like, they had to mulligan down to six and they kept like, uh, Cavern Ancient Tomb. You know? I did not look if they had a Chancellor there. Could have gone badly. Another Mana Crypt Hand. Four mana? Five mana? <laughs> yes. 
Nice, we get the initiative. Unless they play a second creature, I guess. <laughs> Why, though? Yeah, we'll have to dismember whatever they forge onto. Oh, I guess I don't need to do this now. Whatever. Oh, that's fine. I was like taking way too much damage, right? I'm just going to die. My opponent just had too strong of a Moxon start and I had no Null Rod. Oh, no attack. No attack is interesting. I mean, I'm getting trapped. I mean, the minute they find like a seasoned dungeon here, we just die again. Caracas. I mean, it looks like they flooded out. So there are chances here. So I think I'm supposed to wasteland this Caracas now. Also turns off the ability to play like a, a, a Solitude immediately. Then I'm just going to play another Nettle Cyst. And if they have a Swords to Plowshares, I do lose my attacker. But I don't think I can really play around that. Okay. I wonder if this deck wants a basic. They lost a lot of mana crit flips this time, though. All right, so my opponent kept a really strong hand and then drew land, land, land. So we take those. Oh, I definitely didn't want to tap my Ancient Tomb. And... I don't, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think it's super close. I mean, I guess, like, if we, theoretically, if we play Patchwork and Sphere, then... If we play Patchwork and Sphere, then we can't lose to Swords, so maybe it has more value there. That's kind of reasonable. Uh, on the draw, Chalice gone, all my Mind Break Traps come in. Null rods go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe we should have. Maybe we should have gone uh, Patchwork Sphere just to guarantee. Might have been better. I was like pretty worried about tapping Ancient Tomb if I didn't have to, but... Uh, what is this? This would be good against some decks on the play, but on the draw against this deck, can't imagine we can keep this without having any threats. Probably just have to mulligan it. Like, if I had a Saga, maybe? I'm just gonna mulligan this. All right, this one's much better. Uh, we're on the draw. I'm not gonna play this Sphere, so. Amiria, untapped, Pearl, Lotus Petal. I wish I'd get my Mind Break Trap and... 
Archon, Chalice, Archon. <laughs> yeah, okay, opponent. I see you. All right. Should have kept my Mind Break Trap hand. <laughs> okay. Oh, I think we're dead. My opponent has had just like very, very nice mocks in hands. The problem with Tomb First is like, they are just gonna like wasteland it every time, whereas I can play a soul ring off of my ghost quarter. Uh, but now I can't play anything because my opponent has just a broken hand and I can't play magic, so it's I don't know. It's just it's just so dead. I'd the game is just completely lost immediately. I guess I could like theoretically I could hit the strip mine right now. It's just, just is that good? I mean maybe I need to do that. It's just so bad, though, right? I mean, I feel like I have to. I need this ancient tomb to live. Probably. I don't know. Doesn't matter. If I kept my opening hand, I think we would probably win if we drew good cards, for what it's worth. Just, like, mind, tra mind retrap the Archon, play my entire hand. But what am I going to do, man? My opponent's hands were just way, way better than mine, and they were on the play. Patchwork. I'm just going to die to the air again. <laughs> um, ah, there's just like nothing I can do. I'm just going to die. I don't think stone coils matter because like we just simply have never had the mana to play any of our card. Like it doesn't matter what cards are in our deck if our opponent opens with turn one Archon, turn off all your mana, turn off all your lands. Like you just lose. This reminds me of the time that a notable magic streamer cut Archons in the shops matchup. <laughs> all right, it doesn't matter. We're just simply dead. I mean, the problem is we needed to win game one, and we lost on the play, so our game three, we were on the draw, and we just lost. I mean, maybe I was supposed to keep the Mind Break Trap hand. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're just simply dead. All right, boom. Uh, we are now into round four, where we have lost the die roll again. My opponent is on Luris. TFT? I've been doing okay. I, I uh, had a really bad game on stream. But the first game I played today was great. Every time I try to play the end game board comps, it just doesn't work out. All right, Ruby. Chalice. I guess they can spell pierce this, but I think that's okay. All right. Force pitching, fluster. I can go double sphere. Oh, no land drop? They're just dead, right? Oh, I used a strip mine by accident. Oops. Playing a little too fast. I actually think I'm just supposed to play a nettle sis first, and then I'll just play both spheres next turn. Maybe that's like worse. It's like really bad for me to sphere though and get like my academy wastelanded though. Force pitching dress down three cards, but they can't play any chalices, so it's not like it really matters if I get a sphere down yet. Alright, so now ooh. That's just like better. Well, this time I think I really want this to resolve, so. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go Sphere. Do I play a second Sphere, though? That's a real question. Oh, they have another Force. They had <laughs> one, two, three, four, four Forces. All right, yeah, I'm going to play a Sphere, and then uh, hopefully we don't get Wastelanded, then we loop Crucibles on them, and they're dead. They are dead. 
I just I meant to wasteland. I just picked strip because I was playing fast. All right. Uh, we got our favored matchup of Luris, so that's always good. Uh, Smith. If we win this game really fast, we can play a game of TFT. We have not played very long games today. 17 minutes, 15 minutes, 11 minutes. I mean, our matches versus Luris have kind of been blowouts. We either, like, got Sapphire Ancestral, or we, like, locked them out and they couldn't play the game. I just, like, really... I really do like these, like, go-over-the-top decks against Luris, though. Just feel... They feel really good. They don't even have to be shops, but shops is, like, one of the easy ways to go over the top. And, obviously, Crucible Wasteland is just nuts. Alright, I need this Null Rod to resolve. Or I can just Wasteland them. I think I'm more interested in playing Jet Null Rod. Like, they have to counter this. Or they can't use their Saga. And if that's the case, I can go Ancient Tomb Saga and make Constructs. Feels like a really high upside play. And the downside is like not that big a deal. Like one construct maybe. They have their own wasteland. Like, but are we even like wastelanding their saga? Like, do we care? I'm not really convinced we are. Like, their Saga just fades away into a Lotus, and they can't get rid of this Null Rod anyways. Like, who cares? Vanishing Land. I do have four lands in my hand, though. Soul Ring, sure. Yep. Would you like to concede? God, I'd love a Crucible. Yeah. Oh, saga. Do we even wasteland saga though? Yeah. If I had a follow up play that I needed mana for, uh, I could probably I could just probably let it go, right? I mean, if they draw a blue land and play a two-mana blue spell. But they didn't have that last turn. I don't think so. I think at this point I'm more interested in, like, hitting their land, their other lands than their sagas. If they have like white land fragmentized, that's the where this this falls apart, I would say. White land fragmentized, kill null rod, make a construct, but even then we still just untap and hit them with one wasteland anyways. I don't even think that's a big deal. If they ever play a basic, like if they use this to island cycle for a basic, then we can ghost quarter the basic. I just want to draw any spell that I can cast, really. That's like a not a, a mana source. Obviously, Golos is our our best draw, probably. And Mox, Underground C, Pass. Crucible, yes, yes, yes. So I put four in my deck, baby. I guess I can pay for Spell Pierce. I guess I could get Steel Sabotage, so I'll lose out on one damage by playing around Steel Sabotage to get my my Crucible resolved. I think that makes sense. Hey! Hey, 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 Justin! Very nice. 
I guess Steel Sabotage on uh, the Null Rod is pretty good, though. All things considered. They counter this on the way back down. They make two Constructs. I already Wastelanded this turn. They had the Force. Not bad. Could still lose this game now, because I can't actually get rid of the two the Constructs. And then they go and buy Luris with Lotus. Might lose. Steel Sabotage, kind of strong here. I do have infinite sagas, though. So. Maybe it's enough. Nothing I could have done about this, though, right? I could have wastelanded the saga. Maybe I, I mean... Had gotten steel sabotaged, I would have been in a better spot. So maybe I should have just I mean, jammed. Wait, they're not even gonna make a construct. Can't be right. Unless I'm dot. Unless I'm dead. Looks pretty bad for me now, though. Like I, I have to do some drawing to get out of this. Maybe I should have just attacked. They trade, they trade. I mean, if they have a needle, they can needle Saga so that I can't make any. Time walk, sick play. Uh, take a million. Yeah, we need to draw some help to get out of this. Damn. Makes me wonder if I should have played this game differently. I could have, I could have like, strip mined the Saga. But there's, like, so few answers to a resolve Null Rod in their deck that it's, like, a little tough to do that. But... They also had to have Counter Magic and spell stop Sabotage for this to work. It's kind of a tough play to make, but I had time. Like, I could have done it. I just like was thinking that maybe we wanted to use Wasteland on uh, Colored Sources instead. Because we had the Null Rod in play already. Demonic? Can't be good. I mean, they had all their good cards in hand and they were able to unlock themselves. Makes sense. We did have four lands in our hand though. If we simply didn't have four extra, like, you know, four extra lands and had some more spells, maybe would have been a little bit better. But I mean, given I had four lands, maybe I was just supposed to wasteland the saga so they could never actually get enough mana. It just felt like such a waste because <laughs> I had them under Null Rod. It was just not doing anything unless they had exactly sabotage plus counter. Hmm. They just demonic for a mana to buy Luris. That's nuts. Oh, it makes this lethal. Okay, I see. I see. So now I actually have no outs, right? Because I don't have any way to make two blockers. Oh, unfortunate. Too many lands. Not enough action. All right, well, we get to play game three on the play this time, so... Because we broke serve in game one. Lots of ways we can get free wins on the play. Chalice, Trinisphere, Null Rod, Crucible. All of these are quite good. I like... I like Ancient Tomb Null Rod, I think. the most disruptive and the least exposing. I can still follow up a Wasteland with Workshop Crucible. 
Or even just workshop sphere and then go crucible on the next turn. Saga. Well, now I think I like the idea of sphere saga. Definitely took a lot of damage this way, but I don't know if that matters too much. Is it like end of turn bounce my null rod with a sabotage again, or? Just Lorien reveal. All right, well, do you have a wasteland for my saga or like a spreading seas or something? We have make a construct plus wasteland or make a construct plus crucible if they don't. White, blue, Lavinia. Oh, seal of cleansing. That's a good one. Ancient Tomb, not a great draw. They had another force and a steel sabotage. Yeesh. Not great. Now I kind of want to draw like a Golo. So I get, oh, unless I get Wastelanded. Are they going to buy Luris maybe? No, got Wastelanded. Probably gonna hit this tundra. Treasure cruise? Ah, we're so dead, man. Just a million answers into a delve spell. Ooh, that's not a bad one. Maybe I should have played Ghost Quarter. I can't ever let the I guess they got rid of their seal at least. Blue Ancestral, sick. Time Wonk, I assume. I mean, you might as well, right? There are only 19 cards into their deck, by the way. It's, it's not It's not like they played, like, a lot of cards or anything. Like, there are only a couple cards in. Oh, master. I'm gonna get twisted. Might as well, right? White, white. This is a prismatic ending. Oh, it's just Luris in the hand. I can't actually stop this Luris though. And they're gonna have Bowmaster blocks forever. It's not ideal. Unless I draw like another wasteland, I guess. I did draw a crucible. I just have no life left to work with here. I feel like I have to try to stop them from playing a Luris, but I also need Constructs. I don't know. It's so bad. Like, no matter what I do, it's kind of a bad spot. They just drew too many cards. They have seven cards in hand. It's very hard for us. Yeah, they got a Luris anyways. Yeah, and they have a Wasteland for Saga. Uh, I think I'm going to Wasteland them again. 
We don't actually have any cards in their graveyard at the moment. Don't think I'm supposed to take two to play this. They play a black source. I'm like a little interested in ghost quartering it just so they can't replay Bowmaster. Six cards in hand. My opponent has conceded the game. I assume that means that they didn't draw a land drop and they concede to ghost quarter lock. Uh, they conceding to wasteland lock. I guess that makes sense. They can't actually make any loops with null rods and they exiled their seal of cleansing to treasure cruise. They can't get through a 4-4. Four -four. They don't have a black mana to replay Bowmaster, and then they're getting destroyed by Crucible Lock. Interesting. I didn't think we were going to win that game. I guess at any point, I can also rebuy Workshop and play cards from my hand. So this is, this is probably winning, and I probably would not be doing that until I voice landed them out of the game. Okay. I mean, I think that's the best matchup. I think this deck is good against Luris Saga. And my opponent had a lot of good cards against Luris Saga, too. They had Steel Sabotage, Hercules Recall, um, Seal of Cleansing. They had a lot of the good answers. But so far, we're 2-0 against Luris Saga, and we are 0-2 against the rest of the field. All right. Round 5, we have won our first die roll of the tournament up against Slater. Slater could be on Bazaar. Typically, he's on Bazaar. This hand has Crucible, Nettle Cyst. Wait, yeah, I'd probably keep this. Yep, they're mold of four. This could be a win. Mold of four. We could probably beat Dredge on a Mold of four with this hand. I'm not going to play these cards out in case they have Mind Break Trap and they're on Squee. Wasteland. Okay. Fear. So I can go. I think we just win now. Hmm. I still kind of think they're on Squee. I think they're on Squee. I'm going to play like they're on a Bizarre deck. If they're on Shops, that's fine. I'm going to play like they're on Squee. Ley Lines, Tab, Needle, No Cages. I mean, it's pretty easy. Like, the no rods are going to be bad against Shops and Bazaar, right? So, like, Chalice is always going to be bad on the draw here. Karn's going to be bad, and no rods going to be bad. So, like, this is a pretty easy swap out at very low cost. We lose basically nothing by doing this. So. Seems like a pretty good swap to me. Leyline, three ball, creatures, seems great. Bizarre? Wasteland. I'm going to go Ancient Tomb Patchwork. I 
I mean, they kept seven. Oh, Gataxian Probe. What the hell does Gataxian Probe mean? What is going on? <laughs> My opponent's dead. I mean, it has to be Squee, right? But, like, wouldn't you activate? What is Slater doing? Slater's, Slater's like, I'm going to go play my Vintage Cube draft, I guess. I don't know. We take it. I get 3 2. <laughs> All right, here we are. 3 and 2. Six and final round. Vintage challenge. We have one, another die roll. Opponent last seen on Countervine. Our hand has a Ghost Quarter. I'm willing to keep this. I don't think this is like our best hand by any means, but. I don't really mind either. <laughs> this is not a particularly good hand, but. All right. I don't have a tab in my main that I could get with Golos. That'd be pretty sick. But I have the Ghost Quarter, so I'm pretty sure I'm always going to keep any hand that has a Wasteland at least. Obviously, I would like to have, like, Sphere or those kind of things. Or I can just die to Venge Vines. Yeah. Rough. I mean, they kept 7 and they played 13 free power on turn 1. At this point, I feel like we have to just... Check, try to resolve a Golos. It's kind of our only option, right? We don't have enough power on board, or enough stuff on board. Has, this has to resolve. No, they have force. All right, we're dead. Good news is, this is one of our best matchups. Chalice comes out. Null Rods come out. Ley Lines come in. Needle comes in, and Tabernacle comes in. Need to close this. Uh, and then... Karn could maybe come out for a Dismember. I don't think Karn is particularly good here. Seems fine. Alright, well... We knew what they were. We kept a hand that was like kind of medium, but okay against them. And they had a top tier draw. Force 13 power. Eight haste power. We did lose out on the play, unfortunately, though. Maybe we should have mulliganed to a sphere at least. A sphere would have stopped better. Yeah, I could see mulliganing. Like, if we think they're on Countervine, maybe your best play on the play is, play is just to have a Sphere. We have nine Wastelands. My bad. We have nine Wastelands, and maybe it was just not a good enough Mulligan. Because any Mulligan... I don't know, we should like have a lot of bad cards, though, too, right? We have Nettle, like Null Rod. We had Turn 2 Golos. We had Workshop, Wasteland, uh, Ghost Quarter. I don't know. Five. We're mulling to these five, I guess. Oh, no. Cage is really bad against uh, Countervine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring in Cage against Countervine. These ley lines pump my nettle cyst. It's kind of cool. Four card hand from the opponent. Should be a pretty good hand. Uh, yeah, this hand should be great against them. Especially if they mulligan. Yeah, I think looking back, I probably should have given mulliganing a, a bigger thought. I kind of felt like I should just accept a hand that has, like, mana and a wasteland, but maybe on the play I'm allowed to, like, get
get a little greedier and try to find a hand that has a spear. Like with a, with a, with, a, with a spear, like they can still play a uh, hollow one, but they can't like bring back any venge vines. Obviously, if they have like a negation or a force that doesn't do anything, but my opponent has mulligan to three. I think this hand should be most mulligans to three. I can't think of. They just like won't be able to play vines. They're mulliganing to two. They mulligan to one. We won the game. And we don't even have to show them ley line. It's nice. So my opponent kept a seven and murdered us for free. And then they couldn't find a bizarre and they mulligan to zero. So that's bizarre. Uh Do I want anything different? Not particularly. All right, hopefully they do the mulligan to zero thing again. Uh, this is a good hand for sure. Mulligan to five, mulligan to five. These have been some sick hands, by the way. These last, these two, these past two games have been some nice ones. Opponents on of Mulligan to five, and they're tanking, which means they must have a keep, and they're trying to decide what to put back. Leyline double Leyline doesn't actually uh, insulate us from Force of Vigor, but it does mean they have to Force of Vigor both of them instead of our other things, and we can basically never play this Leyline unless we draw Black Lotus. So we're gonna put both Leylines in play, and then we're gonna slam. Either Wasteland or Workshop Sphere, depending on how they sequence and what we think they have. All right, they kept five. I put two Ley Lines in. I hit F6. See what happens. Could even theoretically just play a Crucible, but... I think it's most likely going to be a strip mine, but if they have like too many hollow ones, then maybe we do something different. Could even just be like workshop crucible because they can't really kill this crucible because they, they'd have to kill both ley lines, right? All right, bizarre up to six, down to three. One Root Walla, one Squee, one Wasteland, three cards in hand. I think I like the idea of Workshop Crucible the most. I don't want to, like, play a Sphere and then get Wastelanded. All right, they had a Force pitching a Master, one card left in hand for them. And we have this Golos we want to cast. All right, they're going to go up. They're going to try to find a hollow one here. Uh, and we are basically free to win. Oh, they found a Wasteland. All right. Oh, we have our one Tabernacle. Now, which play is the best? Look, I just strip mine them. Well, they can't really do anything. I might as well just. I mean, they can't activate this bizarre next turn because they're only going to have one card. So I don't actually think it's correct to strip mine them. We can get mana off of this saga, I think, is the best line. Like, this makes the tabernacle bad if they draw a wasteland. But if they draw a wasteland, they probably just wasteland the saga anyways. It's not like they can activate this bazaar. So, like, this turn I'm going to strip mine their bazaar because I don't want them to activate the bazaar. And, like, get value. But, like, the saga is just getting us mana to cast our golos. Uh, I mean, we could also make constructs. It's pretty damn good as well. I think we just strip mine them and play a sphere. They're going to activate, try to hit a root walla. They did hit a root walla. But I mean, we're still playing a tabernacle at some point. I 
I guess technically we can't like Lotus out a Golos this turn if we do this, but. Just gonna get a Soul Ring. Yeah, I think that's probably fine too. I'm just gonna kill these off. Maybe they'll concede. I don't know. I don't really know how much of the plays matter. I definitely could have. I definitely. There's definitely like different ways you can sequence it. Like at some point they could just like not activate and like try to find vigor, but I guess they can't vigor through sphere, right? So maybe that doesn't even matter. So yeah. Oh, this is gonna be a huge nettle cyst, actually. Saga wins by itself, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say I played it like super optimally. I just made plays. This thing's a seven seven because we have one, two, three enchantments. That's hilarious. Yeah, this matchup is fantastic, and I'm not even like overboarded for it. Like you can play more tabernacles and stuff as well. I mean, we went we kind of had a great day. Like we obviously we got destroyed by Discover N. I made a little misplay there, and then we uh, lost to Mono White in some like heartbreaking games. But I think this deck's like pretty good, especially if you win the die roll. Um, like I don't even feel like I played super well today. I feel like there's a lot of optimization you can choose to do. I don't know why this is not showing all the spheres. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think there's like some room here. I'm not even saying that this is the correct way to build it. I just, all I really wanted to do was play four Null Rod, four Crucible today. And so I played four of all the cards that are not restricted that I thought are good. And then I played a bunch of restricted cards, right? Like, I think these are without a doubt the six best workshop cards. And then I just played a bunch of restricted cards with him. I feel like that's a pretty decent way to build the deck. Um, there's like some room to talk about things like Stone Coil Serpent to block flyers. Um, there's some room to talk about Metamorph. Um, but I just like the fact that Metal Sist is super powerful off of a workshop. It's just your fastest clock. And Patrick Time is super hard to kill. Um, and then I just put in Max Ghost Quarters for our Max Crucible. I don't really have like a lot of complaints on how I built the deck. I definitely could have played a little better, and I feel like we could have won some die rolls, and maybe we would have top aided. But a, a nice four two is a good showing, and uh, hopefully everyone enjoyed some different style gameplay. We don't always play workshops and bazaar on the channel, so that's good. More vintage content like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on this YouTube channel. I will see you then.